Welcome to another video from Homestead Hero. Um, I just got done chopping up all those limbs that we cut down in the last video. Um, two of those were huge, a lot bigger than I realized, so they hit the ground. I tried to pull them out by hand. I couldn't do it. I thought I was going to have to unhook the trailer and use the Xterra to pull them out. But I have things on the trailer and I wasn't feeling like unloading it. So I gave the Dixie a shot. I figured what's the worst that could happen? It doesn't pull it. Well, it did. The thing is a freaking beast. It's a tank. That weight really matters. The horsepower came through. Um, the leaves were absolutely soaked. They had sat overnight and uh, it pulled it all the way to the fire pit like it was nothing. So I think today we're going to go ahead and do a full tune up on the Dixie chopper. start with this kit the Kawasaki sells. Uh, the motor I've got is a Kawasaki. Uh, you don't really have to tell whoever the dealer is what your model is. They just need to know your engine number. So I've got the FS 730V. This kit covers all FS series plus a couple of the FRs. And what it's got in it, it's got a replacement air filter, a complete oil change, an oil filter, Replacement spark plugs and a replacement fuel filter. Now, I'm having a little play in my sticks. Um, it's favoring to the right. I think my drive belt is getting a little loose. So we're going to repair that as well while we're doing this. Um, the Dixie has a pretty cool feature for that. But we're going to start with the oil change first and go from there. So this is where the oil is. You can see where the filter sits easy access my hand doesn't struggle at all to get to it underneath it that's the drain plug and right there's where you put the oil in so i'll start with taking the filter off when you put these filters on they should only be hand tight when you take it off that's what you want to see there's a rubber gasket on it. You want to make sure that rubber gasket comes off with the filter. That drain plug is a 10. I'm going to use an extended socket on it so I can get some leverage on it. It's enough to where I can get it out with my hand. Boom, we got oil. Go ahead and take the oil stick out, that way it drains faster. Got some air movement through there. Now this is where the Dixie doesn't have as many uh, comfort features as other mowers, uh, especially with the newer ones, the drain plugs a little farther on the outside. It has a hose attached to it. It doesn't drain into the pan or drain all over the uh, motor mounts, but it's never served me a problem. It's just more clean up than it's really necessary. Now you can see it's still barely coming out, but if I was in a rush, I would put the floor jack under it and tilt it make it go a little faster but i took the day off work so i'm in no rush so i'll give it about five or ten minutes and this is my new filter it's got that rubber gasket on it it's easier to see on the new one than the old one because the old one was covered in oil but when you put these on you got to make sure that the gasket came off the other one because if it's double gasketed then it's going to leak so before i put this on i want to get a nice little coat of oil on this rubber gasket so it makes a nice seal but instead I took the new one and I just dipped it in the oil pan where I'm draining the oil and went ahead and coated it that way. And then you can see that's where it goes. Nice and clean, no filters, no partial filters, a little oil, but that's not gonna hurt and I'm just gonna hand tighten it on. Thank <laughs> you. 
oil filter replaced. So I just realized the drain bucket that I'm using, I've been using probably for the past 10 years. Um, I slide it under, that way the oil drains into it, has a crack in it. So before I put new oil in this thing, I gotta make sure I put the drain plug back I'm in. I wanna start with just hand tightening it in. I wanna make sure I don't cross thread it. It's only a plastic stop. I, it does have a gasket on it. I wanna make sure that gasket gets sealed. Otherwise, this oil change is just going to turn into an oil leak. And then tighten it with our number 10. Not too tight because it is plastic. I'd say that's sufficient. Time to put some oil in it. All right, the oil that came in the kit is four cycle oil. This is 10W40. Um, I've always used 5W30. Um, I asked the guy about it, and he said Kawasaki changed the recommendations. So, not 100% sure how I feel about this, but it does come in this kit, and it comes from Kawasaki themselves. They made the motor. I'm going to go with their recommendation. I'm going to put one quart in first and then probably three quarters of the next quart and check my levels now it's time for the second quart we'll check the levels on her dip six cleaned off and we need to add some more. I added a quarter of a quart more. Not supposed to tighten it down. I assume that's to make up for what goes into the filter. Beautiful, right on the money. Kawasaki makes it super simple to get to the air filter. Twist that one. Twist that one. Whole thing pops off. We'll take this hose clamp off. Pull that out. Clean out this little thing. Throw the new one back in. No tools needed. Make sure it's good in there. Got a good seat in that hose. Tighten down the hose. Put these back in, make sure they're long ways so it's open. It's in line with the motor. Turn it and turn it. Moving on to the fuel filter, I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers, close that clamp in and move it back. It's got another clamp on the other side. This mower has a fuel shut off. Um, as you can see, I forgot to turn it off initially. That's why all that gas came spewing out. So we've got the top clamp off. I just gotta get the bottom clamp off. All right, we got the bottom clamp off. It's the exact same as the top one. There's the bottom one. Our new filter is significantly bigger. It's got the arrow going up. That's the way of the flow. So the fuel is going to come from the gas tank, from the bottom hose, up the arrow to the engine. And we'll make sure that hose is seated nicely in there. It's past the pinch point. 
bring this one around, put it where it needs to go, bring the pliers. That clamp past the nipple. Fuel filter complete. Gas on. Looking for leaks. Not real happy with that bottom hose. I'm gonna go ahead and move it up a little bit. All right, we're moving on to spark plugs. You're gonna need an extension socket, 21. You're gonna need a spacer for the spark plugs. I couldn't find mine before I left the house, so I had mine spaced there to make sure that the gaps are cracked. They need to be between 0 .07 and 0 .08. And we'll go ahead and remove these spark plugs and put the new ones in. This right here, that's your spark plug boot. It's gonna pop off, it's just like so. Push it off to the side. Get your 21 on there, and just spin her out. That's the old one. Not too much buildup. Um, but like I said, I've had this mower for 10 years. And there's a reason why it still runs like new. Stick the new one in. Make sure not to cross thread it. Take your time. In there, take your socket and turn it in. The only reason you hand turn it in is that way you know you're not cross threading. Because if you're cross threaded with the bar, you won't even feel it. But if it's resisting me, I know that I'm cross threaded. Bar back on. I'm going to do snug her up. I don't want to break it. I'm not trying to put a ton of torque on it. Just snugging it up. Pop the boot back on. One spark plug down. Do the exact same on the other side. All right, and I'm going to fire it up, make sure it's all good. quieter than it was when I pulled it in. It's got good power. I'm happy with it. Moving on to the blade. For safety, in case my jack starts to give. To remove the blades, I need a breaker bar, a 26 inch socket, and I use a 2x4. You turn it the way it cuts. That's why I use the two by four. So it can hold that sharp blade for me. It's not completely dull. And then screw it on out. Now these blades are pretty bad in certain areas. They're not terrible in others. 
So I just put it in the vice clamp and I'll get to grinding. I use my grinder wheel and my plug-in grinder. it over and at the other side. When you sharpen these, it's going to start to build a burr on the back side. So what I do is I take the grinder, and I'm going to go right here. That way it's only halfway on the wheel. It can't roll over that edge. I'll go back and forth on the back side take that burr off. That sharp. And the next thing you gotta do, you gotta make sure it's balanced. So I've got this screw here that holds my grease gun. But I also use it to balance my blades. heavy on this side and we'll have to keep grinding. See how it sits straight? Now it's equally balanced. The only reason that you balance them is that if you don't, it'll cause a wobble in your deck. You'll get a crazy vibration out of it, and it's probably cutting like that. I'm going to sharpen three more of these, and we'll put them back on. All right, so now that i got three sharp blades. Take the nut. Put it through. Gets this top cap. It goes on top of it. I'm going to take my grease gun, just a little dab will do, and I want to marine grease this bolt. If you've ever struggled getting your blades off, you're not greasing your bolt. On nice thin layering like that and I'll do it to the other three all right so we got all three bolts uh, nice and greased with a little thin layer I'm gonna hop back under this mower and put these blades back on now if we turned them the way it cuts to take it off turn it the other way put them back on tight this I don't need the 2 by 4 forks I'm holding the dull side of the blade and then repeat three times All right, blades are installed back 
I suggest you always do your own sharpening of your blades. I know some people take them to their dealership or whoever the service provider is for their mower, but I can't put my hand on those without cutting them. That's how sharp they are because I took the time to do it. And you will too. If you take it to the dealership, they'll sharpen them, but they're not going to give you the quality that you can provide yourself. All right, moving on to greasing the fronts. Make sure that nipple's clean. Holds unimpeded. I use marine grease. I don't know if it matters. Just keep pumping it out. Until I see some black residue. I just did this in the beginning of spring. If I do it at the end of the summer, that grease will come out charcoal black. But it still has a hint of red to it. It's pretty well greased and we'll hop over and do the other side. Now we're going to do the spindles. Spindles right here where my hand is. I'll go ahead and grease it. You'll know if it's running out of grease because when you start to your blades, they'll feel like the mower's jumping. I've never thrown a spindle. Had this thing a decade. Now we'll take off one of the side decks or side spindle covers. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is where I feel Dixie choppers behind the times. Or maybe it's because I have an older mower. They could have changed right now. I'm gonna go and flip that back up. Put my mat back on. Most of the newer mowers doesn't require a ratchet and nut. Um, I'm going to have to use sockets to take these off. Now, to their credit, they haven't broke. And they've held up quite nicely. They are kind of a pain. Number four. All right. Those four bolts have been loosened. All right. So we have those four loose, which is the engine mounts. Now this nut right here goes to, I might get it in focus, that bar. That bar will pull the entire engine back, bringing more tautness to the drive belt. So that's what we're gonna to try to do now. Here's that belt tightening. There's my little helper, baby parper. Yeah, I hear baby parper. That worked. And this.
I'm gonna say that's all she wrote. Last thing to do, tighten these last four. <clears throat> tight. Full tune up on the Dixie Chopper, minus the side spindles. Uh, they're rusted closed. It's a 10 year old mower. I got it to break loose, but now the stud's just free spinning. And if I uh, cut them off, I don't really have a stud to put back in them. That's the only thing we didn't get done, is we didn't get the two side spindles greased. But aside from that, she's ready. Thanks for watching.